Okay, so we've got um, we've got our uh, our pairs here. This is the big thing, guys, that you've got to be uh, aware of: is what things are you mixing together? Okay, because I want reactions to happen. Spoiler alert: there's a reaction for every single one of them. Okay, All right. So just make sure that you are being observant of all the possible signs of a chemical reaction. Okay, if you are not being observant for a certain type of, of sign of a chemical reaction, you might miss it. Okay? Some of them, you know, it isn't visual. Okay? For some of them, it isn't visual. So you've got to be, you know, okay, what are the, some other signs? What should I be aware of? Make sure that you record those. Okay? So the A and the B and the C and the D, that corresponds to the materials up here okay, in the materials list. So pair one, okay, that's going to be sodium hydroxide and ammonium chloride. Right? Make sure you grab this, the right stuff. The containers are labeled with the formula, not the letter. Okay? So they're labeled with the formulas. Make sure you get the right stuff. Okay? And as I was saying before the fire drill, make sure that if you lose track of which container you took the eyedropper or scoop from, that you tell me. Actually, there's only one container with a scoop in it. Um, so you don't have to worry about that. And that's, um, that's the sodium hydrogen carbonate, also known as what? baking soda. So it's not that big a deal if you get that on your hands. Okay, same with the zinc. Okay, the zinc is the kind of grayish metallic stuff that's in uh, one of the beakers. You can pick that up with your fingers. Okay, it, it won't hurt you at all. That's why there's no scoop in there. It's hard to scoop that stuff because the chunks are kind of big and they're irregularly shaped. All right, so you can just pick one. You only need one chunk of zinc. Just pick one up with your fingers. Okay, the other thing that's going to be new, okay, our, one of our sources of error from the last lab was that using the depression plates was really difficult. We don't want to have a reaction take place in one of those tiny little contact lens size depressions, okay? So we're using what's called a watch glass. A watch glass, about this big around, looks like a big contact lens. It's clear glass, okay? But it'll have lots of room for you to observe the, uh, the reaction that occurs. How much reactant do you need? One full eyedropper, if it's a liquid, okay? And for the sodium hydrogen carbonate, two lab scoops. Okay, that's the, that'll be an equivalent volume or mass of material. Okay, for for all of them, we're making sure that's controlled. Okay, uh, and then as we said for the zinc, just pick one chunk out, and that'll be lots. All right, everybody follow on that. Okay, one full eyedropper means squeeze the entire thing, put it in the solution, and release it until all the water goes into the bulb or all the fluid goes into the bulb. Okay, now when you take it back to your lab station, carry it upside down. Okay, so that it goes into the bulb and we don't spill everywhere. Okay, how many people from your group should be responsible for acquiring materials? One, okay. Now, when you go up to get your stuff, okay, put one of the, uh, put one of the reactants in the watch glass, carry the other back in the eyedropper. That means that if one of them is a solid, the solid goes in the watch glass. That way you're always carrying an eyedropper back to your station. Okay, everybody clear on that? It's much safer to do that, right? Uh, it's much easier to do that rather than carry a scoop full of hydrogen. You know, it's it's very difficult to keep that from spilling. Okay, um, so those are the pairs. The only two pairs that have to be done in the order listed here are four and five. Okay, you can do the other reactions in. You know, you could do seven first if you want. Okay, seven, one, six. You know, whatever you can do them in whatever order as long as you do pair four and then pair five okay the reason four has to or five has to follow four is because you're going to use the product of pair four as your starting material for pair five okay so you're going to do pair four leave it on your lab station go back get um, the uh, sodium hydroxide okay um, sorry not sorry the acetic acid and bring that to your table and add it to what you had there already. That's the only two that have to go in numerical order. The rest can go in whatever order you want. Okay, questions before we go across to the lab? All right. So when you are putting your lab report together now, Okay, we've already got, we went over yesterday all the pre-lab stuff, okay, so if you're checking over the pre-lab stuff, you got to watch the podcast that says 
reactions lab pre-lab. Okay, this is the one that's going to talk about our observations, analysis, conclusion, etc. Right. So you have your observations already, hopefully. Okay, uh, that would have happened when all of these things occurred. Okay, it does say on here, you know, it's a good idea to verify your findings by comparing your results with another group, which of course you can do in here right now. We have time for that. Plus, I posted the results. Okay, on Google Classroom as well, so you can compare to them. It looked to me like everybody got the right results this time. Okay, um, so we shouldn't have any issues there. These are all pretty obvious. Um, now, for the analysis, it is really important that you do all of the things that these questions ask for. If you miss any of these steps, you're going to lose big marks. Okay, so question number one asks you using words and formulate. That means write the reaction in words and then write it in formula form. So I want to see both forms of each reaction, okay, with the exception of pair four and pair five. You do not have to do those two, okay? Um, write the chemical equation of each chemical reaction that occurred in this activity, okay? Question number two talks about two of the reactions produced precipitates, okay? Uh, so you know which two those are. Using the chemical equations you wrote, okay, so when you predicted the products, okay, look at them and see on your solubility chart which one of the products of those reactions would be the precipitate that you observed, right? So you go back, you look at your solubility chart, and you go, okay, well, when this metal is with that non-metal, they're not soluble. So that must be the precipitate. Or when this metal is with that non-metal, it's soluble. So that was the one that was not the precipitate, right? That's what you're doing for number two. Now, a couple of the reactions did not go probably as you predicted, right? So we're just going to have a quick look at them right now, okay? Um, in question number one, when you did this one and you predicted it, did you predict it as a double replacement reaction? Yes, you did, okay? Because that's what we would have thought it would be, except what happened in this one? You got a smell. Smells come from what? Gases. Okay, if you have a double replacement reaction, are you ever going to produce a gas? Right, something else happened. It is still a replacement reaction, but it's not a true, like, by the book, double replacement reaction. So to help you out with this one, okay, one of the products produced is ammonia. That's the gas. Okay, it's the stuff that's in Windex. Right? That's why it smelled like Windex. Okay? It's also the stuff that's in smelling salt. If you've ever watched Olympic weightlifting, they crack that thing right under those guys' noses, and then they go psycho and lift incredibly large amounts of weight. Okay? Well, when they, when they crack those things, it releases basically the same gas, and it gets your adrenaline going You're, because you feel this acidic presence in your sinuses, and your body immediately starts an adrenaline reaction, and you can lift superhuman things, okay? unless your bones give out. If you, ever, if you saw that, that happened to one of the guys at the London Olympics, right? And he, was in, and he went up, and then you just saw his leg give, give away. And then they came up and stood around him with this thing that blocked your view of his compound fracture. Okay. So I'm giving you, okay, one of the products here. So we know now that we know where nitrogen went, and we know where three of these four hydrogens went. Okay. From there... This is still now a double replacement reaction. You've got to figure out the other two products okay, from this. So we've taken care of this, and we've taken care of that. Now it's essentially HCl. Okay? We should be able to figure out now, from there, what's left. No, just one more hydrogen is left. That's why I took out the four. There's one hydrogen left and one chlorine left. Uh, you highlight it and then go up into uh, format, I think, and that's where superscript and subscript are. You want to subscript it to make it small and below. What's that? Okay, well, it, no one would have predicted this right. That's why I'm not marking your predictions, okay? But I'm giving you this so that you know kind of what to do for the analysis part of the reactions. So we've taken care of the nitrogen and three of the four hydrogens. So what we're left with is NaOH reacting with HCl. I think we can figure out what the rest of the products are. Okay, That's your guys' job. Now, for pair number two, same thing. You probably looked at this and said it's a double replacement reaction because this is an ion and uh, CH3COO is an ion, so you probably did a double replacement reaction for that. But again, what happened when we mixed those things together? What did we get? 
Well, you should have had a strong vinegar smell before because that's what CH3COOH is, is vinegar. Okay? Um, but when you got the fizzing, bubbles come from making a gas. So did you predict a gas? Probably not. All right, so this one's a bit tricky. The gas that's produced is carbon dioxide. Okay? The carbon dioxide comes from here. So the C is taken care of, and two of the three oxygens are taken care of. All right, so essentially what you're left with is that. Okay, no, no, that's reactant-wise, that's what you're left with. Now figure out what's going to happen between these two things. Remembering that vinegar is a weak acid written backwards. Hydrogen is the metal, H+. Plus. This is acetate. It's a 1 minus. Okay? It's hydrogen acetate, but because it's organic, we write it differently. Okay? Everyone follow there? So really, if you are writing this like a true ionic compound, it should be written like this, HCH3COO. Okay? That's how it really should be written, but because it's organic, we have to write it differently. Okay? So... That's what you got left after the carbon dioxide is taken care of. So you got to figure out what else is going on over here. Two more things. Two more things for number one. Okay? You don't have to do pair four or five, okay? Cuz I already wrote them out in their entirety in the uh, in the prediction chart for you. Okay? The other ones are pretty straightforward. You shouldn't have any trouble with 3, 6 or 7, okay? They work like the standard reactions that we have gone over. Okay, so I want to see them balanced with products written in words and formula form. No, this is just where I was showing you, showing you the actual stuff here. So you do this in the analysis. Okay, question number one in the analysis, you do have to balance. Okay, question number one in the analysis wants full balanced reactions in formula form and then reactions written in word form underneath. Okay, or words on top, formulas underneath. Well, no, you already have the prediction. You should have done that yesterday. This goes in the analysis, okay? So you're going to write out... No. You're not just filling out this chart. Guys, you're overthinking this, okay? What I want to see, question number one, and this isn't a reaction that you did, okay? Well, let's just say I had... Um, let's just say that that was a reaction that we did, okay? So what I want to see in question number one is this predicted, so balanced, it's all balanced, it's already all ones, okay? And then I want to see, no, this isn't in the chart. I just had, that's where I had the reactions typed out, okay? So sodium chloride plus lithium hydroxide, right, I want to see it all in words, okay, gives sodium hydroxide plus lithium chloride, okay, that's what I want to see for question number one, for all the reactions except four and five, is that clear, okay, and then for question number two, you got to tell me, you know, for the ones that pr produced precipitates, you got to go and look at their products and go, okay, which of those products is not soluble using your solubility chart and identify them. So the, pre the precipitate in pair whatever was this compound. The precipitate in pair whatever was this compound. Everybody clear there? Okay, that's your analysis. That's what you got to do for that. Okay, and then you got your conclusion, okay, uh, after that, so restate your hypothesis, copy-paste, okay, and then tell me, did you see all the things you predicted, okay, were there reactions, were all the signs what you predicted, okay, uh, did you see them all, all that kind of stuff, put that in your explanation for why you accept or reject your hypothesis. Two sources of error, okay, explain what you could do to fix them, and you do not have to do the class discussion, we'll discuss the class discussion when I hand back your laps. Okay, now I think I made that due um, March the 8th, is that right? Yeah, okay, so 
when I hand it back on March the 9th, that's when we'll talk about uh, the class discussion questions. Okay. You got time. You can work on it with the Chromebooks here and see how much of it you can get done. And whatever you get done, you don't have to do for homework.